This drink uh, you may have heard of is called the Gimlet. And this is a very simple drink, just um, lime cordial, uh, traditionally roses lime cordial, and Plymouth gin. And the early sailors and early explorers had real problems with scurvy, the lack of vitamin C in the diet. And if you don't get any vitamin C over a period of time, you will eventually die. And this was a real problem for the British Royal Navy, the Merchant Navy, and explorers. And what they found through various experiments was that citrus fruit was the perfect way to keep men healthy on board ship. A guy called Lachlan Rose created the first lime cordial without alcohol. And his lime cordial was taken on board ship due to the Merchant Shipping Act, which meant that all merchant and British Royal Naval vessels had to have lime cordial on board ship and men had to have a ration of it. So the men, to make it more palatable, mixed it with Plymouth gin. Although it sounds like a very simple drink and maybe not the most appealing, it's a completely delicious, crisp, and quite a, still a quite strong little drink. I'm going to make it three parts to one, so three parts of the gin to one part of the cordial, because I don't want it to be too sweet. Uh, I want it to be nice and clean on the palate. And then importantly, obviously, we still need water. So we're going to stir it down uh, as we would a martini to chill the drink, but also to importantly add the water that's going to open up the flavors of the gin. Okay, so we're going to take uh, our lime cordial and our Plymouth gin. So, like I said, three parts of the gin to one part of the lime cordial. That's not three shots, though. Um, it's just the ratio of ingredients. And then stir down. Again, we're looking to chill the drink and bring out the flavors by adding the water to the gin. Again, using the aromatics, um, the water will unlock the aromas from the gin and allow me to smell them as the drink opens up. What I've used here is Plymouth Gin at the original strength of 41.2. However, traditionally this drink would be made with Plymouth Navy strength, which is actually at 57% ABV, which is a great gin. More alcohol carries more flavor. If you are going to use the Navy Strength, you will need to stir down longer. It does need more water to open up the gin and to make it uh, more softer and more acceptable on the palate. The reason why it's called Navy Strength Gin at 57% is because this was the strength the Navy insisted to have on board ship. And they insisted it was 57% because it was stored in barrels next to the gunpowder. Now, if they were out at sea and there was a leak of the barrel of gin, or some of the barrels of gin, onto the gunpowder, uh, they were concerned that the gunpowder would not ignite, and so the British Royal Naval vessel would be completely at the mercy of any enemies. So, the gin had to be at 57%, then if the gin spilt onto the gunpowder, the gunpowder will still ignite. And this is the origin of the word proof, or proofage, to talk about the strength of alcohol in a spirit because before the gin was allowed to be taken on board ship they'd take a pinch of gunpowder they'd take a sample of the gin from the barrel they'd douse the gunpowder with the gin if it still ignited it proved the alcohol content and the gin could come on board ship we're just going to finish the drink off with a little twist of lime just to bring the freshness to the drink and there we have it classic gimlet